Meditation 13. Reflection at Rest. My dear Lord, the day I heard that you put your devotees in distress because you want to make them glorious. When your devotee suffers, then later transcends, the accomplishment is much more appreciated. I have in the past considered you unfair, seeing the tribulations of your devotees. Although I have always been austere, I have not really understood anything about austerity. Now I am gradually appreciating how such tapasya positions one closer to an unconditional service platform. I am also appreciating that austerities and suffering can increase one's quality of service and understanding. Rama himself was after all encouraged to undergo austerities to bring about the creation. Lord Shiva is in a constant state of austere meditation on you. I reflect that in true love, suffering or any austerity performed for the lover is not taken as an inconvenience nor an imposition. For one is eager to do whatever is necessary to enhance the welfare of the lover. As I lie here, waiting to sleep, my dear Lord Shyam, I am noticing how little love I have. If I possess real love, I would be jumping at every opportunity to serve you, free of all envy and impersonalism. I know I am so far away from you, dear Lord, but in your pervasiveness, you are so near. Sometimes I become attracted to your different energies, momentarily forgetting that you are the source of all beauty and splendor. Is this distraction a sign of my lack of chastity? Dear Lord, as I drift off to sleep, I am praying to dream of you. Pushing my physical body aside with its enviousness and agitation, I shall search the three worlds, seeking your company and the company of your servants. I am praying that they will let me join them and that perhaps I will wake up one day a soul fully surrendered to you. Why not? I am already millions of lifetimes behind. I will look for signs of your devotees, even though when they see me, they will laugh in embarrassment, thinking, what right does such a contaminated fool have to join this transcendental brigade? Where is Narada Muni? Let me find him. Perhaps if I am sufficiently fortunate, I can convince him to take me into the presence of your pure devotees. And why not? After all, he gave his mercy to Mograwi the hunter, who was less sinful than I. I have heard that you are so kind that you look at the intentions of your servants and elevate contaminated service to a transcendental level. You took Putana as a mother, and even though she came to poison you, you gave her liberation in exchange for a few drops of breast milk. Dear Lord, perhaps even a fool like me, having no understanding of selfless service, who is envious of you and full of fear and doubt, still has a chance. Please take my maturely motivated submissions and extract what little love is there. I can appreciate that austerities and detachment are necessary to help one rise above the three modes. Becoming steady and not identifying with happiness or distress, 
or the other relativities of this world. I can become a true candidate for the spiritual world. In the past, dear Lord, bloated with greed, I have constantly missed the wonderful mercy that you constantly pour on all your creation. How could I settle for a multitude of temporary pleasures? Now, my dear Lord Sham, maybe tonight you will allow me your direct association. Habituated to avoiding you, tired of rendering service to my insatiable senses, only by your unlimited call of this grace will I get out of this rut. Just as you overlook the real intention of Putana, you are so kind that you can overlook my contaminated state. Maybe tonight will be the night. Off I go, searching, knowing that one day I will meet you, although I am fully unworthy.